smart. Oh, God. <laughs> Hello beautiful humans! It's Angelica. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Today I have a DIY for you. So we'll be making over a Dollar Tree binder into something super personalized. So if you feel like you made all these New Year's resolutions and you haven't started, I just want to let you know you're not alone. And it's not too late to start so i always feel like i feel more motivated to do things if things look more put together and cute i don't know if that's just me but that's why i decided to embark this little project of making my own planner so in this video i'll be teaching you how to make over a dollar tree binder for just a few bucks without further ado let's get on into it all right for my materials i did buy paper at michael's it was buy 10 papers for two dollars actually i bought it at joanne's not michael's but tomatoes tomatoes just side note really quick i already cut my papers measured them i just didn't want to bore you with that part of this project and also i didn't want to give you exact measurements because some people find those smaller binders so these are the two papers i ended up choosing these flowered papers and as you can see, I already cut them to fit the size of the binder. I chose some colors that went with the blue of the binder because this crease part is still gonna be visible. Dollar Tree has different colors, I just like this blue color. We're going to apply some glossy Mod Podge evenly on the front, put my paper on top, and then add another layer of Mod Podge. So let's go on and start. Okay, this is the front, right? Yes. Sometimes I have to double check it opens like a book, you know. So this is a process. Making sure it's evenly distributed so you don't get any bubbles. Now I have an even layer of that Mod Podge on my front cover. So I'm going to take one of my papers and since the binder does have some rounded edges on these sides, I'm going to take my rounded cutter, corner cutter, whatever you call it. This is optional, I'm just super picky with things sometimes. And then I'm going to stick it on my binder, making sure I press it on all sides. Wow, that is how my cover is looking right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this on the back, adding some Mod Podge and then placing the paper. Now that I have my front and back cover glued on, I also cut a piece for the spine. I made sure to hole punch the little holes where those little metal circle thingies are. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down as well. I got carried away and didn't show when I glued this in the middle. I thought it was cute little touch. It has some gold foiling and it says do everything with so once you have everything glued on the outside of your binder, you are going to coat this with a layer of Mod Podge on top. And you just want to make sure you apply this Mod Podge to all the edges of your paper so it's adhered well to your binder. Also make sure your brush strokes go in the same direction. So we have now applied that Mod Podge on the front, the spine, and the back. It is glossy. And once that is right, you can start with the inside of your binder. You're going to repeat this process by choosing your papers of choice. I went with this dot and line paper pattern. I'm going to apply the Mod Podge, put down the paper, Put the Mod Podge on top, which is the same exact thing I did on the front and back cover. Okay, so I've got the papers glued on the inside, and now I'm going to apply that layer of Mod Podge on top to seal it. So it can withstand whatever comes our way. Gluing these papers takes a while, but I like to just zone out, put some music, 
Hey guys, it's just me editing the video you are watching right now. I just want to warn you that the amount of times that I say pockets in the next few minutes of this video is a little obnoxious. So if you want to make a game out of it and just count how many times I said pockets and comment down below or I don't know, take a sip every time I say pockets. I'm pretty sure it'll make this craft a whole lot more interesting. So yeah, that is all. Back to you, Path Angelica. You're doing great. So moving on to the inside pockets of your planner, I took some white cardstock and just cut it to the length that I wanted the folder pocket to be, or the height of it, so to speak. So I cut it to, let's see, 10 inches tall. Yeah, but you can make it slightly bigger, slightly smaller. I cut this 10 inches tall rounded up one edge on the top side same with this one i scored half of an inch on one side and the bottom once i folded those i cut off the corner where those two would meet so when i fold them the papers don't overlap so i just fold into a corner neatly by the way when i say scored i mean i literally used this tool i took my ruler and then just repeated going back and forth with the tool and it doesn't cut it just indents the paper so it's easier to fold on that crease if that makes sense i hope that makes sense this would be the front of my two pockets and i am going to put some decorative paper on each of them i went with this leaf one so i cut it to the same size so i'm gonna glue that down with some mod podge just make sure that all of your edges are stuck planners usually have the little pockets on the sides and then a few small pockets on the left corner not on the left corner but on the left side <laughs> We got our three little pockets. The largest one I cut in 3.5 inches by 5, and then the two smaller ones I cut in 2.5 inches by 5 inches. When I did these, I made sure to score half an inch on the two sides and on the bottom, and then I also cut right where the creases meet up, I cut the two bottom corners, and that way when I fold in all three sides, the two corners fold in just right. Once you pick your papers, you cut them to the size of this part. So once we stick all the pockets on the inside, that's when we're gonna put the Mod Podge on top of the paper. You always wanna add that Mod Podge on top because that's going to really seal in the paper and make it more durable. So we're bringing our now dry binder back into the picture. You can see my inner pages are glued as well and they look glossy we are going to be adding the pockets so the opening should be towards the rings on both sides that way you have two pockets to insert things into so you're just going to add glue on that half an inch scored border so i am going to add some mud podge on both of these pockets you don't want to add glue here because then your pocket will just glue onto the inside of your binder glue it more or less close to the edge of your binder and then you just press it down on the two tabs i am going to add a layer of mod podge on top of these two pockets except for the pockets you want to make sure you don't get it on the edges because if this glues down then your pocket won't work anymore so then i went ahead and glued the small little pockets i first started with the top little pocket that way when i glue the next one i glue this one a little bit more on top of this one and then the biggest pocket is the last one I glue and I glue a little bit on top of the middle small pocket. And that is it for making this personalized binder. So this brings us to the end of this video. If you liked this content, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. In my next video, I will be using the rest of my goodies from my haul, showing you how I put together my binder. If you wanna get motivated, stay on the lookout for my next video. Thank you so much for the support and for watching everyone. Keep it crafty, bye.